everybody, welcome to another night of Chess on Psychology. I uh, hope you are having a great night or morning as I see from uh, Australia. Wow, I've actually never been to Australia. <laughs> I always wanted to. Um, oh, Mexico, Germany, whoa, all around. Yeah, great. I love Germany. Um, I've never been to Mexico, but I've always wanted to. Surprisingly, from Latin America, I've only been to Panama for just a weekend and Brazil. I really should travel more. Um, GMP should just sleep right up here. Let me risk by rotating the camera a little to show uh, the plot ball. Oh, he's actually looking. Hello. Alright, so. Um, we have, he has graced us with his eyes, so, um, we have that too, and let's see, what else? Ah, yeah, I, uh, today I figured out that I am not done with the semester, I, I got a feedback pay from my paper, and it was painful, so you will most likely hear me vent about that for today a little bit, and <laughs> I really thought I was done with my semester, I was quite happy. Um, but besides that, I'm having a pretty chill week. Um, I took a, a diagnostics MCAT yesterday. That was extremely painful. For those of you who are um, already in med school or sharing my journey of being pre-med and trying to make it to med school, like, guys, I have no idea how that's going to work out. Like, at this point, <laughs> I'm just glad that I still have, like, three and a half months, uh, four months to just study. Three and a half months. But, yeah. It's very scary, but um, so I uh, I was looking at some chess recently, uh, surprise, and I kind of found um, I realized that I haven't really talked too much about Olefin in our lessons, so I kind of wanted to go ahead and do a few of his masterpieces. At least in my mind, he might not consider these masterpieces, but in my mind, these are really great chess. So. Yeah, um, I, yeah, Pishi, I don't know if you guys remember, last week Pishi had some little sniffles, and so I got him like the medicine and everything, but also at the same time, I had to crank up the heat in my room so much that I'm just basically walking around like it's a sauna. He's sneezing stuff, so, so, it worked, things we do for our cats. Ah, oh, Brian, um, Oh yeah, I do want to visit Canada too. Actually, one of my high school friends just moved there, so that was also pretty cool to keep in, keep track of. Uh, open book exams. Uh, I have A in all my classes except that one paper that is just really. Um, I don't really know what is the right way of way of saying it. Besides, she's like such a nice, polite teacher, but at the same time, she's not really. Like, I wish she would give me, like, real feedback instead of just, I, like, ugh, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's just a struggle, but I'm glad she's giving me another chance to revise it. She's not just giving me a horrible grade, so. Yeah, I got that going, too. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, so, oi, Vim, everybody's doing good. <laughs> How do I not blunder? Uh, I mean, depending on the position I, I do. Alright, so I kind of want to go ahead and get started with these two games because I'm quite excited about them. Uh, also, whoa! No, no, no. Wrong. Wrong click. So yes, this was actually a game that was played uh, in 1937 and it was their sixth match game, so keep that in mind as well. And yeah, I think this was the historical. Um, I mean, I don't think this was the greatest game of the match, but this is the one that I kind of always liked, but anyways, I've also, um, it's been a while since I looked at Olefine's games for purpose of uh, comparing which one is better, so he's definitely, yeah, he's such a great brain. Ah, oh, we got some jumpy jumpy. Alright, oh my goodness. Mm, how do I? Ah, oh, okay, I got it. Uh, Alright, let's just go ahead and start looking at the game a little. So, it was also kind of funny for me how in this position, like, this is such an uncommon position, like, you don't really see these type of openings or these type of chests being really 
played in um, high level chess that often and yeah I agree it was kind of a surprise but at the same time I think bishop c4 is another weird slash just awkward surprise because right now I think white could just like develop and have a pretty pleasant position you got the center your bishop is still attacking so if you were to like play bishop d3 let's say take potential take b5 I kind of like white nothing wrong with it uh, you have a strong bishop yeah I mean you gave up a pawn but it's I mean that's kind of the, the deal with any gambit right so um, I kind of get why this is interesting but taking on c4 take on d4 now you gotta also move your knight so question um, what should you do right now? So white to move, what do you think you should do? So let me get the iPad a little closer so I can actually read the chat and don't have to just keep moving around. Okay, 92, interesting, but um, just because I said you have to move the knight doesn't mean you have to move the knight. You could just uh, keep thinking about what else, if there is anything else. So I see a lot of knight issues. Oh, I see a queen f3. Okay, interesting. Trying to do intermediate moves. Um, Ah, I see a knight f3. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's what I was waiting for you guys to um, tell me. So knight f3 is, the, is a very interesting way because if you were to take it, now bishop takes f7. King e7, but how do you think white would continue? Uh, this did not happen in the game, which is very interesting as well because you would think that Oive would, um, you know, try a little... Uh, aggressive stuff, but just the idea of knight f3 is so crushing. Well, keep in mind if you were to play bishop g5, knight f6, and you have just gave up this knight for basically nothing, so you can't just play bishop g5, you need to play more aggressively. Hmm. I mean, you could potentially, I guess this, the problem is with even if you were to play something like take, take, and like, I guess e5, there's still this like h6, g5, and you're not going to really be able to win your piece back, so you shouldn't go for bishop g5, that's the point. I see a knight d4, I see a uh, um, bishop takes g8, hold on, hold on, if you were to, um, your bishop g8 is interesting because I'm assuming that you see bishop g5 check, knight f6, so your solution is to take care of that, but careful because queen takes d1 is with check, and that's gonna hurt, and then you're still gonna be a piece down. I, I don't think I've seen the oh I think I see the correct move being suggested by a few people. Queen b3 is actually the interesting way to go. It's kind of like the only way to try and keep up some sort of attack. And um, right now black could just take on b2. Um, you could take back. And this is something that could potentially happen. You would get the piece back that you gave up on c3 a while ago. And um, you could just continue by this to um, take this guy. And I think this is a, this would have been a very interesting chances for both people. So that is I think that's something that if you had kind of um, if you were a little like prepared before the game, that's something you would have gone for. <laughs> I agree, bishop g8 is quite strange, but
But what what else are you gonna do if not Bishop G eight? You you've lost the piece. The queens are getting treated, so you have to do something. You don't wanna you don't wanna blow up your advantage. So you have to. I mean, you have to eat the piece back. Now taking back is not forced. Um, Black was trying to like throw a check in there. You bring back the knight, and uh, still Queen F seven is happening. So Black has to come up with some sort of way to defend the king. And unfortunately, now it's like you have to take it. Take it back, potentially. Take this guy. And you could just castle here. And both chances have pretty decent um, chess. I mean, it's a decent fight. Nobody's like that much better. But I think the problem was that Oive was not ready for this idea. And so he did not really prepare for it well. And keep in mind that if um, after queen b3, um, I'm thinking, is there anything else that black could have done that would have been interesting? Hmm. Maybe just knight f6 to try and defend that. Uh, now I could just try to throw and check over there. Hold on, can I take this with any check? I kind of like this idea. Ah, queen b6, throwing the check, and c5 makes this slightly more unpleasant. I mean, white still has a pretty decent attack, but I think bishop e3 kind of makes the most sense because you're stopping queen b6 and you just want to do bishop c5 and make it very painful. So, yeah. All right. Uh, I think everybody in chat are kind of with me. If you're not, just let me know. Two pieces for a rook. So you are, I believe you're talking about the position, oh, how did I get here? At the end of this line? Well, yeah, that was my point, that you could take and um, take, oh, this was actually pretty interesting. Uh, this was an idea with bishop c5. I didn't mention this because we didn't really talk about bishop c5, but if you were to take bishop c5, check. Gotta take back, and then you would castle, still attacking g8. And uh, black has this queen h5, because if you take it, then your queen is kind of trapped. You can't really take on h7 anymore. So that was also another interesting idea. And black is doing much better just because the queen is kind of really doesn't have much to do. However, let's go back to where white did, made, made the bishop c5 mistake. Now, if, we were, if white was smart and took it over here, check knight d2, and we talked about this position. You could take on h7, you could cast the castle. Um, so I Manny, the point is that yes, if white were to give black like five, six moves to develop, like one move there, two move there, let's get the rook out, let's get the king somewhere safe. If you give black like five moves, then yeah, white's gonna be in some real trouble. If black gets the chance to use this bishops. And for that, white needs to cast immediately, white needs to start attack immediately. So it's all about the dynamic. As, as long as white has a chance to actually start attacking a little, white should be fine. Uh, any other questions for this line while I'm scrolling back to get to the main line? But I think the element of surprise is a huge deal over here because like knight f3 is not exactly the first move you think about, right? The first move I thought I was like, well, oh, so we'll probably have to bring the knight back. There might be some checks involved, then I would probably do like a bishop d2, but hmm, I don't really want to exchange this bishop. Like I was thinking about something like this initially, and then we end up with this pretty interesting idea of, oh wait, I could actually do knight to f3. Uh, I'm Manny, uh, that's the point. That position is very playable and very fighting for both sides. Um, so compared to what happened in the game, I like that position too. So knight f3, and here black made a horrible mistake of playing b5. So black should have taken this, and black should have went to that line, and black should have gotten to that position with two bishops, as I many is suggesting that it would have been pretty, uh, at least a better fight, very, very fighting game for both sides. But the problem now is b5. Why do you think b5 is a bad move? What do you think is wrong with b5? I think the first 
first thing to think about is, okay, can I take this? Well, to be fair, the first thing we should always think about is checks, but that check right now is not really doing much for us. Ha, <laughs> nice one, I meant. Um, yeah, I don't think at the moment it's doing anything for us, so in order to create more checks for the king, we are gonna sacrifice this knight. And if take, we would simply take, oh, sorry, my bad, ouch, ouch. We would simply play bishop d5. And that should be pretty painful. That rook is dropping, first of all. And second of all, this king is extremely weak. This pawn is going to fall soon as well. So that's another way that could have been played. Um, so after knight takes b5, black realized that, well, oops, I can't really take it because of my poor rook. So black played bishop a6. Now, white to move, what do you think we should do? He likes the idea that his tree is taller than my chair and he has to sit up there and like stare down at me. It's a very interesting combo. Yeah, I think queen b3 is pretty interesting. Great, great job. So the thing with queen b3, ooh, hi, hi Steve Lord. Queen a4, I would recommend you to uh, be a little bit more cautious because queen a4, now this is a fork and you don't really have that idea with bishop d5s anymore and then you would have to take it and you would just kind of give up that knight and we don't really want to do that. So be careful with that. Queen b3 is the best because now if you were to take it, now I could just even take it over there and then queen e6 is also coming so you'd have to run through there. So I could even probably throw in that check. This is just way too painful. We shouldn't really, I mean, black shouldn't really give that chance to white. So black should uh, think about something to, you know, keep this guy protected. Uh, if bull bishop takes b5, we have bishop f5, and just take this guy, still trying to create numerous attacks left and right. So, um, I believe in the game, Oive played queen to e7. Now, white to move, what should we do? This is also a very, very interesting move. Like this move, I did not find it myself. Uh, like, I, like I think everybody can agree that this position is better for white. But finding the exact move and that sequence of moves is a little, yeah, it could be a little challenging. Especially since right now your knight is under attack. Yeah, I think if you play queen d7, knight d5 is a serious threat, yeah. Well, you have to also keep in mind that if you try to actually like distract with like bishop g5, then there's this queen d4 that's coming up and wants to, to exchange the queens, and we don't exactly want to exchange queens. Ah, partial, I beat you to bishop g5. <laughs> still queen comes to b4 so the problem is queen coming to b4 and wanting to exchange queens we don't really we shouldn't exchange queens as white at least Bishop d2 is a suggestion. 
I it it feels weird to me because first of all, what if take? Yeah, bishop d5, uh, knight f oops, knight f6. Take on a8. White is much better, but just like thinking of bishop d2 as a way of stopping queen b4 is a little bit just, huh? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, castle. Nice job, Rahimi. Castle is actually what was uh, what happened in the game. Castle is pretty nice. You just stop the queen before, stop any type of queen e4. You just put your king in a safe place. Easy peasy. Um, the idea of knight d6 could work, but it's a little premature because you're giving up so many pieces. Take, I'm assuming you want to take, king d8, I'm assuming you want to throw that check in there. Um, if knight comes out, okay, you got e5. Uh, but if just king runs, Keep, keep in mind, whoops, not there. Queen b4 also coming up, so probably you should do something with the king over the castle. Eh, rocket dice. I mean, this is also an interesting attack. Don't get me wrong, if you played this, it would become a very interesting game. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but it's not the best way to go about it. So we, we always want to have that mix of strategy and tactic. So if you were to just play like attack, attack, attack with my d6, um, you, if you are a great tactical player, you could probably pull this off, but ideally we want to be able to balance it out and have a mix of, um, mix of both dynamic and strategy. So, yeah, that's why we would just go for castle. Uh, after castle, take, now what should we do? We can't really take on f7. We could take on a b5, but should we? So white to move, what to do? I see some ideas with bishop d, bishop takes f7, okay, interesting, bishop takes b5, and queen to d5, okay. Mm. So I see a lot of interesting ideas, knight d4 could maybe be worth considering, bishop f7 is a flat out no, because you just don't have in any, like you don't have pieces to attack, bishop takes f7, queen takes f7, and then what? You're just like, you're just in a really pickle. So you can't really do that. I see that you want to get pieces out, but you really do have to take it. Like you don't, it's not, it's not. You don't have that many choices here, unfortunately. So you do have to take. And the thing is, if takes, okay, now you got queen d5. You're picking up the rook. So great, right? Now let's go a little back and take a quick look at knight f6. Knight f6 is actually what happened in the game. So, so uh, the material is you're not really behind. That much far behind in the material, just one pawn if I'm not mistaken. Actually, never, not even then, because that took be took back. My bad. Uh, you could just be considering this as a potential falling pawn, but that's even even better for you, because then you get to open up the king, right? So exactly, I'm Manny. Yeah, bishop b5, and we just take back with the bishop. Ta-da. Um, I think that's ideally what black would want to do, but keep in mind, right now knight f6 is stopping your queen d5, which means if with black to move, black is going to take your bishop. So what do you think you should do?
Ooh, hi, spicy people. All right, so I see a lot of interesting ideas, but I think the most logical one that I, s I would go for is just bishop c4. Just eh, stop all the, stop stopping all the um, weird ideas. E5 could be interesting. I don't really see anything wrong with it because you're the king is the center. You're just opening it up. That should be basic, okay, in chess. Um, I think this is e5 is pretty doable too. Right now, black's position is pretty busted, so either bishop c5 or e5 wins. As long as you don't do something weird like bishop f4 and then you lose your pawn, you lose your bishop. I think even if even this works a little <laughs> surprisingly. So yeah, uh, as long as you don't really make like a humongous blunder, you should be fine. Even bishop f4 actually works. So never mind on that. So, but uh, oops, bishop c4 makes a little bit more sense. Your bishop's job here is done, so let's just get it away and go back to the original job. Knight d7, and now we can just pick this guy up. And it's so funny because right now, this is just move 12. So, in span of 12 moves, Oive is completely busted. Like, really busted. Like, I can't even think how he would be able to get out of it busted, and he didn't, so. Yeah. Um. All right. So in the game, uh, what the played would be, but to be honest, this game is pretty much done. We just like I think we only have very few moves. Like maybe um about less than 10 moves to go over, and this is all super painful for black. What nationality is Oive? Ooh, uh, this game was in 1937, if I'm not mistaken, so I do not know. I think Oive was from Netherlands. <coughs> Whoa, sorry, that just backfired. Whoa. Oh, that was not good. I am so glad I live alone. Um, anyways, yeah, so I think one of is Dutch, uh, different to my memory, but if I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me, I would love for that. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've, I haven't really been anywhere, or I've never, I mean, I haven't really seen anybody in the last two weeks, so, yeah, now I got, I got, uh, Pishy's, uh, Pishy got me sneezing. We take turns. But anyways, uh, so this was kind of funny because uh, Oive was the, uh, I believe, he was the reigning world champion at this point. So it would be kind of funny if he like, just like resigned in 12 moves. So, uh, yeah. He didn't resign in 12 moves, but I mean, it's, he's pretty lost. So when you can play like queen basically back to d1 and still hold the like, plus 5, you are super winning. So he played queen c2, uh, well we just played queen c5, and it's just a matter of technique, but honestly I believe even like knight b3 is enough. What about bishop e3? I kind of like bishop e3 too. Bishop e3 you have to be careful because there's knight e5, but you can even just play b3 and have a fun, have a fun time. Uh, in the game, uh, Alfheim just played knight f5, knight e5, bishop f4, pinning that guy. And this is just super winning. Bishop f7, take, 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 and pick this up. Now attacking there, there, and the bishop is also defending b2. This is super painful. And in the game, um, Alakhan just played bishop d6, pushed the pawn. This is just, I mean, I, I don't think I have enough words to describe how painful this is, but I'm sure you can imagine. And. Yeah, just take, take, rook d5, and I believe here finally Oliver resigned, which is, I can only imagine how painful this was. Yeah, um, so back, I think the problem that Oliver started facing was, first of all, all the way back with bishop takes c4, he probably started getting super surprised. And after that, this knight f3 kind of also got to him, I would think so. And I think those are the two only like real big moves. 
But yeah. Let's have them both Oyvind and um, Alakhan are super great chess players, but somehow this didn't really get work for them. I mean, um, let me rephrase that. Uh, even though they were super great chess players and, well, I mean, world champions, Oyvind kind of got really busted in the opening, which is very, very fun for me. Anyways, let's take another look at another game that Alakhan played. Oh, I'm glad you guys are enjoying. But uh, basically, as long as you're not blundering something serious in that opening, in that end game, you should simply have been uh, pretty fine. You shouldn't have um, experienced any problems. So, yeah, I don't think that would have been an issue for that end game. Just don't blunder pieces. Don't give free stuff, as I usually tell my students and I tell, try to live by that too. Alright, let's go ahead and do another Alheim game. This one is versus Laskir. And, um, let's see, when was this? Ah, this was 1934, so three years before the game uh, with, whoops, three years before the game with, Jesus, who was uh, Oyvind. Oh my god, why can't I speak? Alright, uh, let's just go ahead. So, Normal opening so far. So far so good. Uh, we still play these. Okay, I might like this. Bishop g5, so far so good. My d7 makes sense. e3, duh. Okay. Um, so I want to ask a little question. For example, right now, what do you think white, where do you think white's pieces should go? Where do you think black's pieces should go? If you already play this opening, feel free to throw in hints or just give the straight out answer. If you don't play this opening, try your best to figure out what, what should go where. Because that's such a huge thing in chess that just trying to figure out um, where, like, where to place your pieces. I am not German. If that's the question, I love Germany. I've been there a bunch of times. The plan for Alheim's defense is, I mean, honestly, I would say sur surprise, like just to surprise someone. That's one of the biggest things because up, up, up from top of my head, I don't know any great chess player that only plays the Alheim defense. So... I agree, black should be trying to do something in the queen side, but that's not kind of the point. It's more about um, how should you try and develop, like probably b6, bishop b7, and uh, that shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Um, I don't know my current rating, and I always get that. I grew up with feeder rating, USCF confuses me, uh, but I, I'm below, to, I'm a I'm gonna say 2 to 80 uh, for FIDE. I think that's it, but somebody could check and let me know. Anyways, um, yeah, yeah, I agree. B6, Bishop B7 is kind of the idea for black because you gotta figure out what to do with your bishop. Your bishop ain't coming out of there unless white were to take it. And Whites uh, also should start to do something in the queen side. So first thing first, I think bishop d3 should come pretty soon. And this rook could try and come, okay. We're definitely doing short castle. And then uh, what else? Probably idea, I mean, I'm not I'm not that comfortable with rook c1 at the moment. Mm, you could try to do other things with bishop d3, queen c2. You could try to start push over here, that's another idea. So, yeah. Well, yes, but uh, we're not talking about the exact move order right now. We are just kind of talking about, well, where the, where the pieces belong. So, whenever, as soon as you figure out where the pieces belong, you should have an easier time trying to place them there. But anyways, um, Alphine went with rook to c1, c6, bishop out. Take, take, and now um, this is kind of like last year played knight d5. Uh, super, this is also funny. I I've always wanted to talk about this. I think I will talk about it next time about the Alhein defense. Um, there was this there is this one line. Uh, this is not it, 
but that uh, from black side when you play uh, against the queen's gambit there's this cute knight e4 that's a last year gambit um, actually i don't think it's a gambit it's not really a defense either so um i've always known it as the last year opening so i'll show that to you that's actually pretty fun i think i've talked about it before but yeah this is exactly exactly thank you pastor pastor of muppets <laughs> Uh, this is Casablanca's free maneuver. Yeah, good job. Take, take, knight out, knight back to f6. Um, this was also possible, but then knight goes to g3 and no more e5. And white uh, and black kind of wants to try and push for this e5 anyways. Exactly. Castle, take, and um, we are in another, like, I think this is a very common opening, like I don't think there is anything super new in it compared to the previous game that we saw. Um, you could try and take here as white, but then there's like knight e5s, and that's also not super pleasant, I would assume. Yeah, there's knight g5, sorry, there's like knight gf5, and um, there are, I mean, whiteness is still playing, there's nothing wrong with any anybody's position, but I think it might be a little easier to go knight f5 first. Oops. Knight f5 first, and then you take that. Knight e5, and now, why to move? Any suggestion on what to do with the bishop? Uh, I'm any, I don't know. Man, I don't even know my own rating. I think I keep track of Ben Simons or anybody else's rating. I don't know if she's sleeping rating. Yeah, I think we should simply go bishop back to, to b3, not d3, just b3. Yeah, let's just keep the bishop safe and it's pretty cool diagonal. Um, take, well, I mean, you have to take. And now you are in a position as black that you have to decide, should I try and exchange queens or should I try and run? What do you think black should do? Kishi's is sleeping rating is definitely 2700. His meowing for food rating is again 2700. Um, he's very, very cuddly. That is even like 3,000 at this point, it would be pretty creepy. But um, he's also very, um, I don't know, like, I think the only thing I wish he would improve a little bit was when he goes outside, he kind of like doesn't really come back as fast as I would like him to, I have to go like chase him. That's the only thing I would um, hope for him to improve, it's just a little bit. Maybe like go out, come back every 10 minutes, give me a meow, go again. <laughs> um, so interesting how people don't really want to exchange queens. That is what Lasker did. He didn't exchange queens, but he should have. He should have tried to exchange queens because, well, this is a, I mean, this is not a very pleas pleasant endgame, especially because knight's going to d6. But uh, understanding that this endgame is better compared to your chances with queen b6 is very crucial. Um, yeah, so what do you guys think? What, what do you think we should do as white after queen goes to b6? So one thing that I would like to mention about Alakine is that he is he had that like art of finding attacking squares for his queen. If that helps a little. So I see the idea of queen b6 was wrong, queen c7 was better, but it's the same thing. I mean, you can, if white could still just try to persuade you to exchange and then rook d1, then you get to this exact same position as if you had taken this queen initially.
So queen b6. Now what? Oh, queen d6. Yeah, exactly. I think you should simply go for this queen d6. And uh, your idea is that well, I mean, first of all, you're sacking the knight. Second of all, you're improving your queen. Third of all, you could uh, already have ideas on the king, not exactly knight e7, maybe, but you could think about knight h6, like if knight goes to g6, ah, knight h6. You take it, I'll take on f6, and I'm beginning to poke around in your king, right? So, uh, black simply played knight to d7, protecting the other knight. Now, white demo, what do you think we should do? Okay, so I see the idea with queen g3. I think queen g3 is very interesting, but maybe slightly premature. Queen g3 right now, just g6. Maybe. Or... Stay there. Hmm. No, I think queen g3 is actually interesting now. I think queen g3 would have um, been... Should have, yeah, I think queen g3 also um, should be okay. But in the game, uh, white took, just made a small ch difference and played rook d1 first. And the idea is that, okay, I'm gonna do this rook d1, now I could wanna go queen to g3. So you're gonna, like, you're not exactly uh, showing your hand for those of you poker players. Um, but white is actually uh, forming a very uh, strong attack. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about how to attack, just like the move order of it. Alright, so rook d1. And in the game, um, black actually played rook d8, which was a wrong move. Black should have played something with like queen b5 or queen a5, just trying to poke this knight. So like if you play queen a5, for example, um, I mean, you're just trying to attack this knight just a little bit, and um, you could potentially try to swing it to the queen side. So sorry, king side. So I think that's the only thing that would have been a um, little bit more engaged because right now black black's queen is just just weird, not really doing anything. So rook d1, rook d8, now finally queen g3 as suggested uh, a little bit ago, g6, and now what do you think we should do as white? And I'm gonna give you guys about 30, sec 30 to 40 seconds because this is a very interesting position. I don't want you to just tell me, oh, let's find knight h6, let's find knight to 7 I kind of want an idea, like... I want to do this with the idea, this with the idea, that, like uh, a simple plan. And you kind of already know that you have a small advantage, so it shouldn't be too complicated to find it. So none of the moves that I've seen so far is even remotely correct, so guys, take your time. Take your time. I'm not saying knight h6 you won't win, but I'm saying it's not really, I mean, it doesn't really, it's not really the plan. Um, bishop f7, king f7, knight h6, just king goes to g7. You just gave up a bishop. Um, queen h4 maybe, but queen h4 just uh, g takes f5. Ooh, rook d6, isn't there a knight d4? I don't really like this idea of knight d4, because even if you try and exchange, I mean, even if you try and 
take stuff over there. Oh, hold on. There's a king issue. Ouch. <coughs> Ouch. Yeah, then you're going to actually lose the rook. Huh, interesting. There's a queen takes g6, and then you can do perpetual. Huh, maybe. I mean, if you really want perpetual, rook d6, maybe. Uh, rook d4, the problem is knight c5, attacking the bishop, you want to exchange the rooks, even if you like, try and run with the rook, take over here, and just, what if I just take over here, you don't really have a clear plan. So guys, let's take, let's take our time, let's take a minute, without typing, just try to, try to think. Really think. We've already eliminated a bunch of these moves. I see the correct move being mentioned earlier, but I would like more people to land on it before I say it because this is this is a very critical position. You get to this position and then you're like, okay, now what? You know you have advantage, but then now what of it is very, very important. I see the idea of knight h6, you want to take f7, but that's not going to work. Your knight is much more valuable than that rook on f8. Nope. Whoa, this position is really getting you guys. So two people so far that I've seen have said the correct move earlier, uh, but I really don't want to give it up. So I see that you guys are talking about some ideas to get to h6 square, but exactly, thank you Thomas, queen g5 is the best idea. I see two other people have mentioned it, uh, I think it was Amos and uh, Christian. Yeah, I think those two, so good job. I mean, it's, it's not a super hard move because you just want to go give checkmate. And queen g5 is also putting pressure. Queen g5 is also also uh, putting pressure on that rook. Queen g5 is also bringing the closer. You can do more stuff with the knight. So queen g5 is a great move overall. It's not just about this attack and this mate. So queen g5, uh, in the game last year just played king g8 to avoid a bunch of checks, but now white just gets knight d6, now f5 is getting uh, poked. Black plays king to g7. Now, white to move, this is a very brilliant move. What do you think we should do as white? I mean, Daryl, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're listening and you're learning, but I want more, I want more, I want moves. I want moves, I want ideas, I want patterns, I want checkmates. And the cat is still passed out. What is it? Wait, wait. I never could use a nap myself. Aw, Jesse, yay! Jesse's teaching right after me. He's great. So I see your ideas, but I am gonna have to say Sydney wins this move of e4. Good job. Yeah, e4 is great because the idea of e4 is that you simply want to play e5. So you're you're doing the classical. Uh, you're doing the idea that I told you that it would be great if you could do a mix of strategic and dynamic. You're not, you're not really leaving any soldiers behind, so you're just going for e4, eh, you just want to do e5. Now, if your opponent, uh, if your opponent is like, you know, Lasker and plays like knight g8, then you can start to uh, bring some other pieces to the third rank. So, rook d3, um, you, could, you could also just play e5, I guess. That's another possibility. You could just go for rook c3. That's also super duper cute, cutely winning. 
But um, Rook D3 is what Elephant chose, and after that, now actually Black made a horrible mistake. Black plays F6. White to move. What should we do? Keep in mind this f6 is to stop e5, but when you play f6 you open up like a whole different can of worms. So white to move, how can white punish black for this horrible move? Uh huh, I know f6 is pretty horrible, but how can we punish black? Oops, how can we punish black? Exactly, yeah. Alright, so I see a lot of my death fives, but would you guys please tell me the full line? My death five king has to go to h8, that's not the question. Then what? Yeah, exactly, thank you. Um, sorry, knight f5, queen g6, uh, and eh, there you go. You take, there's checkmate. If you don't take, there is another checkmate, so yeah. No, I think this is a pretty uh, pleasant way to finish a game with queen on g6, it's pretty awesome. But basically, yeah, force mate. Alright guys, um, this was pretty cool. Um, feel free to find these studies on Leeches, our, our Leeches account, and I saved them under the, um, let me go backwards. So if you go to the studies and you just look for um, the, the latest one that I have, Dorsa D for December 4th. Ah, it doesn't actually show. Let me resize this real quick. If you do that, uh, all the uh, all the all this one up here, these are the ones that I've uh, been showing and I also showed a bunch of these in um, the puzzles that I showed on Friday classes for the end game and tactics. So feel free to just go use these. These are pretty cool um, stuff and it's open to public. So just go on the uh, Leeches, our Leeches account, go to the Census Jessica account, and yeah, the studies and you should you should be able to find it pretty easy. All right, with that note, I'm gonna leave you to go hang out with ah, what's the link? Um. So that's actually a good, good question. Let me just try and drop the link. Mm. Uh oh, where do I go from here? Ah, can I actually? I'm working with two different accounts. Oh my god, you guys are gonna see my YouTube. Uh oh, this is gonna be fun. Actually, let's just go here. All the weird things I've been watching on YouTube. Oh my. Ah, I can't send it. Why can't I send it? All right, I, I'll just email it to um, I'll just email it to Ben, and this should be doable. All right, uh, let me close this part. I don't know. I probably should have emailed this to Ben a little bit earlier. Oh, okay. but yeah, I'm emailing it to you now. Ah, oh, never mind. You found it. Okay, great, great. I don't know why it didn't let me, um, I don't know why it didn't let me paste it. Okay, great, awesome. So here's the link for that too. The last two games are the ones that we looked at today. And feel free to um, scroll through the puzzles and um, just enjoy them. Uh, otherwise, have fun with Jesse. Tell him I said hi. And I will see you guys on Twitch channel on Friday.